Hi, Peggy here. This is your week one recap. We've rebranded. We are no longer Team Bundy. So we're going to do things a bit differently here on these recaps. First order of business is no insults whatsoever. I want each of you to have the greatest fantasy experience you could possibly have, even if it compromises my own success in fantasy, even if it means me not winning for the next 10 years. I want you guys to experience the optimal amount of happiness in all the pickups that you make, the players that you draft, the players that you choose to play every week. I wish you nothing but the best. So what do you say we get this recap started, huh? Okay. Paul is now the owner of a new record. Our champion, Paul, with his score of 57 points this week, is now the lowest scoring champion in the opening week. Huh? I mean, that's just unfortunate. Let's, let's hope, um... Let's hope Paul improves. I mean, what do you say, guys? Let's... <laughs> Let, let's give a hand for Paul because he, after all, he won last year and um, you don't want to see him lose here at Team Peggy. I mean, this is this is uh, this is this is an exact example of why Paul fucking sucks dick and he never deserved the championship in the first place. You see what happens? You see how emotional Paul got after I was talking all that shit last year and then Paul came in and he won his fucking counterfeit championship and now he comes out week one and he scores 57 points this is your week one recap and it's bad enough that i have to call myself peggy i will not rebrand and we will continue the insults because as always it's always been about the papers so how, what do you say we read that last statistic in real peggy fashion and yes, this is Team Peggy. Don't get it confused. I'm a man of my word. Paul is now the owner of an unfortunate record. With his score of 57 points this week, he is now the shittiest team, shittiest championship team in week one. Fresh off of a championship, fresh off of his fucking shellacking of Andy, Paul is the worst team to ever come back off of a championship. And it's no surprise to me because he drafted like an asshole. And uh, he deserves it. Though he was fortunate this week because he uh, went up against Hensel. And Hensel is now the official... Just give me one second. Hensel officially has scored the lowest amount of points ever. Now that comes with a bit of an asterisk. Because Hensel, for whatever reason, unless he's lying to all of us... He can't access his fantasy, or he wasn't able to access his fantasy account, so he wasn't able to take out Andrew Luck, he wasn't able to shift any players, though with Hensel's managerial skills, you gotta guess that if he was able to access it, he would've went up from 23 to maybe 48, still would've lost to Paul though. We had a lot of injuries this week, and you forgive me if I'm a bit over, all over the place. This is week one, and uh, the venom, the, the, the hateful venom has to sort of escalate. It just doesn't come all at once. This week, we had a lot of injuries. I, unfortunately, was one of those teams who uh, suffered from an injury. We had Allen Robinson getting hurt. He's out for the season for Orlando. David Johnson unfortunately, is out for the entire season as well for Joe. Now, if you guys remember last year, Joe's number one pick, who was, of course, Adrian Peterson, got hurt in week two and was out for the entire season. And now Joe's number one pick, David Johnson, is out for the season. Joe doesn't have any luck. I mean, Joe is the butt of, um, he's the butt of every joke here at the recaps, and it seems like this year isn't going to go any differently for Joe, unless, unless, Joe changes that. Danny Woodhead for Dro, two to three months. I mean, Danny Woodhead, is, you know, he's, he's really a specialist. I don't know how much that's going to hurt Dro. Andrew Luck for Hensu. Andrew Luck actually had an injury coming into the season, so again, he wasn't able to take him out, but Andrew Luck, from what I understand, what I've seen 
uh, on ESPN, he seems to be out for a couple of weeks, and that's pretty hurtful when it's your number one quarterback, really your only quarterback. I don't believe Hensel has anyone here. No, he doesn't. And, of course, Danny Amendola, for me, Team Peggy, for a couple of weeks. Now, Danny Amendola, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, t I told you guys in the chat, I mean, I, I'm not really sure uh, how often I was going to use him. Uh, maybe in, in, in times of desperation, maybe I would have used Danny Woodhead. But uh, in, in any case, I guess anybody who is a target for Tom Brady in a in a matchup situation has some sort of value. But uh, with the receivers that I have, I'm pretty confident that I wouldn't really fucking need a Danny Amendola anyway. Not a lot of meat on the bone as this is week number one. And by the way, that statistic that I read to you guys earlier, uh, the highest point total of any champion coming back uh, for the next season is Ed with 127 uh, just last year. I thought you guys would like to know that. So let's get to the scores, right? Team Peggy defeats Ewok Rape by a final score of 106 to 70. I got 18 points from Antonio Brown, 18 points from that Fournette gentleman, who, unfortunately, I don't even know his first fucking name yet. He just better score points for me at will, and that's the end of it. Ewok Rape got a shitty performances from uh, Brandon Marshall. He got uh, a shitty performance from the Vikings defense and Greg Olson, all scoring one point apiece. When that happens, you ain't going to beat anybody except for Hensel. And as I mentioned to you, Hensel scores a whopping 23 points, and he falls short up against uh, Paul by the final score of 57 to 23. Uh, fuck you, getting three zeros and eight points, which was his high from Crowell. And uh, well, who really gives a shit what Paul does? He's he's on the Paul. Paul's really just he he's sleeping this one out on the couch. I, I'm I'm neglecting him. I am not inviting him into the circle of champions just yet the circle of champions which there there is a a room just on the side which is just reserved for jay and i those these days i don't even know who jay is anymore uh you also had andy losing to the commish 48 to 68 andy getting shitty performances from matt forte uh, bob kelly uh, Kelvin Benjamin, it's really a tough one for me to trust Kelvin Benjamin or um, Cam Newton, who Ed has. That's that's a tough one because Cam, I, I, I've seen so many frustrating drives where it's like, just fucking throw it, just throw it up there. I mean, what, what's Kelvin Benjamin? Like fucking 620? The guy's tall as shit. You just throw it up there and you just hope for the best. Cam's going to throw an interception anyway or he's going to get sacked for like seven yards. Just throw the thing up every now and then and trust your receiver. It's so frustrating to watch Cam Newton try to get out there uh, to those receivers. And, I mean, there you go. I mean, Greg Olson um, got just one point for Eric. So that pretty much shows you what he does. Um, a bad performance by uh, Russell Wilson uh, for O, though that was probably a matchup issue because the Green Bay Packers pr pretty much locked them down. Um Got a good performance from Ben Gordon, 13 points, and a, a solid performance from Amari Cooper with 12 and 14 points from his kicker. The highest point getter of the week was Dro defeating Hot Dad Bod. I, I don't, I, I don't like, I don't like this name. I, I got to tell you, Jay, I'm not, not a fan of this, this, this. Maybe the name, all right? I like, I like Dad Bod. But I don't like the logo. I don't like hot dad bod. I, I don't, I don't, just, just don't be, you know, don't be ironic. Just, just fucking say dad bod. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Pedro got an amazing performance from Kareem Hunt with 39 points. That shit's not going to happen again. He got 18 points from David Carr, 15 points from his defense, and 15 points from his kicker. You score, your kicker scores in the teens, and you pretty much got this shit in the bag. Uh, Jay got a uh, negative one point from uh, his Texans defense. He got four points from Le'Veon Bell. You got to figure he'll he'll have better days than that. Um, and uh, D'Angelo Hopkins, sorry, DeAndre Hopkins, who is about to uh, go off right now at kickoff as as I'm doing this right before the Thursday games. Um, 
I'm sorry, I clicked off of that page. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins got 11 points. And um, the, the final matchup, uh, Ed defeats Joe 62-48. to 48. Ed getting just 12 points out of Cam Newton. That was his high. And he got single-digit performances from everyone else. Luckily, David Johnson got hurt. Uh, and Tom Brady just didn't really have a Tom Brady performance. Uh, and I think that's pr- pretty much the reason. And, and a Tom Brady performance not being a Tom Brady performance means it's going to trickle down to uh, Rob Gronkowski, who Joe has. Joe's roster is it's good. He has a solid roster. He's obviously going to have to make some sort of a move, not trusting Eddie Lacy, maybe giving Jonathan Stewart a try, who's playing against Buffalo next week. I'm not sure how Buffalo is against the run, but uh, I, I would give Jonathan Stewart a try. And if that doesn't work out, there's always CJ Anderson on my bench, Joe. I mean, you could just give me Gronk. I mean, you, you, you could just do that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying out here in the open that that's what you should do, but I'm not saying that's not what you should do. Well, let's just move on to next week's games, which is basically right now, which is dad bod going up against team Peggy Ewok rape going up against that shill of a champion, Paul Orlando going up against Hensel Ed going against Andy Joe going against Dro, Big Apple Enterprises. And Joe, I've, I've told this to Dro. I've told him this last season. Change your name. It's not Big Apple. I mean, what's what's like the, the fucking fruit in, in San Diego? That's a joke. All right, that, that, this is actually really good. What is like the national fruit for like San Diego? They're all fruits. Get it? Because they're fucking gay. Okay. Change your name, you fucking asshole. All right, so those are your matchups for week two. And this was a bit of a, of, of, of a quickie. I had to get this one out, and, you know, get my sea legs going as, as the hate will, will create a snowball effect. And by week two or three, uh, it's coming at you fucking full force. As always, I, I always want to stress to you guys that moving forward, please, please, uh, if we're going to do this trading thing, and this is just to help me, just like it, it helps everyone else. If you guys are serious about trades, send trades. Send trades. I encourage Andy. I encourage people to, to, to you know, let, let's get things shaking and moving. You know, let's not uh, just uh, hit each other up and say, hey, who do you want? Um, you know, I got Antonio Brown. Fuck him. He's a, he's a piece of shit. Do, 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 do you want to pick him up? Let's let's talk about who you're interested in. Joe, CJ Anderson, just fucking you know to fucking tell me. Ed, Saints defense, obviously. Let's let's communicate. Let's get the trades going. And as always, may your players get hurt before they leave the locker room. May your quarterbacks pull their hamstrings, and may your wide receivers get arrested for marijuana possession. Go fuck yourselves.